Hello and welcome again to my Inkscape tutorial. My name is Dr. Babila Tachu and in this tutorial we are going to learn how to manipulate handles at nodes. We will use two different ways of drawing the backbone of a water droplet icon to explain the essential things you will need to know for your illustrations. Let us start by drawing a perfect circle with the ellipse tool. I will pick the tool here from the sidebar and then left click on the artboard and hold down the control key to create a perfect circle while dragging. Next we wish to have anchor points. To do that we have to turn this circle into a stroke by selecting it and going to path, object to path or using the keyboard shortcut shift Control C. Now if we select the Edit Path by Note tool and click on the object, we will notice we have anchor points. Handles become active when we hover with the mouse over the anchor points they control. Once we do this, the point goes red. The first thing you may want to know is how you can move an anchor point to transpose an object. So let's do this by selecting the top anchor point with the node tool by left clicking and pulling over it. Then hold down the control key while pulling it up. Holding down the control key will constrain the transposition of the object. We have just moved this anchor point by holding down the control key and pulling it up. Another way of moving the anchor point using keyboard shortcut is to select it and use shift and the arrowhead keys on your keyboard. Hitting the arrowhead key to a direction will take the anchor point that direction. So here hold down the shift key and hit the up key. The note goes up. I hit the down key and it goes down. Again I hit the right key and it goes to the right. And I hit back the left key to bring it back. Next let us see how we can use the handles to control the shape of an object. We can drag these handles down towards the central vertical axis of the object to curve these sides. Let us try to pull each of these handles towards the vertical axis and you will notice that you cannot change the shape of one side independent of the other. To change the shape of one side independent of the other using the handles we have to break apart. We can break the path at a selected node by choosing the node and coming up here to select this tool or use the keyboard shortcut Shift B. And we can join them again by choosing this guy up here. But for now I just want to have it broken. Then now we would be able to pull the handles to change just one side of the object independent of the other side. Holding the ALT key down while dragging will snap the length of the handle so it is not increased nor decreased. Holding the control key down while pulling will allow the handle to snap in increasing or decreasing angles of 15 degrees based on which direction you pull your handle. So let us go ahead and hold down both the control and ALT keys and pull this handle towards the center. Then also grab this one and pull it to snap same number of times towards the center. I will let them be like 15 degrees each from the central axis of this object. If we did not hold down both the ALT and control keys, we could have verified if both handles sit the same symmetrical distance away from the imaginary axis by selecting the object and hitting N to access the nodes. Then click on the ruler here above and pull a horizontal guideline below to verify both handles are sitting in perfect symmetry about the vertical axis. 
If the handles are not sitting in perfect symmetry, you could have pulled the end of the handle till it snaps on the guideline. Now, what does our object look like? It looks like a droplet, doesn't it? Let us go now to the bottom of this droplet and see the next features. Using the node tool, we can pull each side of the handle at an anchor point independent of the other. If we, however, wish to move both handles simultaneously, we need to lock the node so that both handles scale the same way when we pull them out. To do that, we would select the node and click up here on Make Selected Nodes Symmetric or use the keyboard shortcut Shift Y. Then we can grab one handle and pull and notice that both handles are scaled in the same way. But most importantly, we also notice that we are changing the way the bottom of the shape looks. So we can use this technique to change parts of a shape. The next thing is scaling an object. At this stage, you may wish to scale the object. You can click on the object with the node tool and select these middle nodes here. So I am going to do that by clicking here to the side and pulling an imaginary rectangle to cover both nodes. Then select Show Transformation Handles for selected nodes. And then holding down the Shift key, squeeze the object in the middle to transform it using these handles. Clicking on the handles would convert them to rotation handles. We do not need to rotate. I just wanted to show you. Then I'll come here and unselect the option for us to go forward. And we can move these middle nodes along the path of the object by selecting both middle nodes again. Then hold down the control key and pull one of the nodes to alter how the curvature looks. An alternative way of transforming will be to select both nodes and then hit the less or greater than sign on your keyboard to either decrease or increase this length between the selected nodes. Next, we are going to draw this droplet from a square. Could you ever imagine drawing this from a square? Just hang on and watch. We just could draw any shape from any shape, assuming we have the right skill set. For us to see how that works, let us use an other method of drawing this droplet-like object. This will let us appreciate better some of the tools we just saw. So I am going to select the Create Rectangles and Squares tool here on the left and click on the drawing board here and hold down the control key while pulling the mouse to draw a perfect square. I will choose the selection tool, then click on the object so that I get these rotation handles which can be used to transform the object. Then holding down the control key, I will rotate this square to make its longest axis align with the vertical plane of the drawing board. Here below in the status, we note this is a rectangle or a square. Next, we wish to have anchor points just like before. To do that, we have to turn this object into a stroke by selecting it and going to Path, Object to Path, or using the keyboard shortcut shift Control c the status shows we have 8 nodes. I will select the extra nodes and delete them so we have a total of 4. This was one too much. I take Ctrl Z. And now we have 4 nodes. We will now go ahead and then select these 2 nodes in the middle and this one in the bottom by clicking and dragging the cursor over them. Then we will go up here and choose Make Selected Nodes Auto Smooth. Now we see that by making these three nodes smooth, the object has been transformed to look almost like this droplet-like object on the left. 
To make it look more like this, let us start to alter it a little bit. First, let us select these two middle nodes by dragging the mouse over them. Then hold down the control key on the keyboard and click and pull them down and notice how it changes the look and feel of the shape. And the next thing we may wish to do is to scale this by reducing the width here. We will select these three nodes and come up here and choose Show Transformation Handles for selected nodes. Once we do that, we will see transformation handles here on the nodes we can select and manipulate. So you now have this familiar box with stretching options which interacts with your selected nodes, just like you've seen somewhere else. Also, while holding down the control and shift key on the keyboard, I will grab one of these arrows and squeeze it in to have a shape approximate to this one on the left. We are going to scale it. We could scale it in or out till we are satisfied with the look of our object. I will click on the side to deselect and let us compare both objects. To make the droplet here look more natural, I will select these middle nodes and scale in the middle of the object. Then I will select the bottom node and also adjust it a little bit. And then adjust this bottom part on the right to look like the one on the left. Let us select this bottom node and come up here and choose Make Selected Nodes Symmetrical. Then we can grab one handle and pull and notice both handles are scaled in the same way. So this is what you want to do if you want to scale and transform both parts of a symmetrical object in the same way. But most importantly, we are also changing how the bottom of the shape looks and can make it look more rounded than it was before and doing so in a symmetrical way. You can adjust the different points until you are satisfied with the shape you wish to get. Now, if we hold down the Shift key and click and drag on this tip, we will notice we cannot easily pull out handles from both nodes. I am going to select the tip, then come up here to Join Selected Nodes, then Make Selected Nodes Symmetrical, then finally break the path by selecting break path at selected nodes. Now I can hold down the shift and control keys and grab the handles and pull them in to curve this top part of the droplet. And finally we are done. That is how easy it is to manipulate handles. And in all it is going to take you a little bit of practice to grasp how these tools work and for you to be able to use them intuitively in your design or artwork. I hope to have given you a brief introduction how you can manipulate note handles in Inkscape to get different cool illustrations. In follow-up videos, we will use these skills to illustrate a water or buffer droplet. And for those of you in the biomedical sciences, we shall also use similar skills to illustrate the merozoite stage of the malaria or plasmodium parasite. If you have been using the previous videos to learn how to draw figures and do illustrations, please comment below and share your experience with those who are trying to learn this right now. If this is your first time here, I would like to have you give a thumbs up and subscribe below because this video series is all about helping you to effectively illustrate and communicate your research results or work. And mastery of the skills I show you here is going to be a game changer in your life. And this is going to change your study and work life positively. Otherwise, see you in the next videos where we will illustrate liquid droplets and a stage of the malaria parasite. Have a great day. Bye-bye.